So welcome to another uh, tutorial. This one uh, is one that I've been wanting to do for a while, and that is basically how do you create Vorenois patterns uh, in SketchUp. So first thing we need to do is, is we need to download some dra a draw points plugin, and we can just start sketching points. And so uh, Vorenois diagrams are great also for like creating uh, pebble walkways, uh, all kinds of lattice work kinds of things. Uh, interesting walls and textures. Um, so here I'm going to do is I'm just drawing a bunch of different uh, different uh, little points. I'm creating bit, building my own point cloud. Once I've done that I want to you know, download the Vornois uh, and Conic Curve plugin. I'll use the tri Triangle Points version first which is one of TIG's plugins and then I'll use Vornois XY on top of that. And so you can see it creates my Vornois and what I need to do now is I'm going to basically hide the uh, Oops, well, hold on, let's interrupt this because I want to talk about why it works sometimes and why it doesn't work other times. So, sometimes when you triangulate points, you look at this pattern, and when you see this particular pattern, you notice on the left it's kind of all cramped up, uh, very, very tight there. And so, when you run the uh, Vornois uh, XY plugin, you'll see that it doesn't really actually uh, work correctly. So, what you got to do is just place back in the point cloud, and we need to actually start to move these points around, move them in a different, in a, in a, around so that they can be farther away from each other and get less bunched up on the left side that we saw earlier. Uh, and by moving these around and kind of keeping them equidistant, we're going to get a nicer, kind of a nicer pattern. Uh, so I'm just using the move tool, clicking and dragging as I move these around. Um, once I'm done, I can select them all and I'll go back in and I'll say, okay, let's uh, triangulate them first. And we have that group triangulation, uh, that group. And once we've done that, then we can go in and we can say, let's create the uh, Vorenois XY and see that works very not, very much nice, nicer. So uh, I'll go back uh, uh, to the uh, regularly scheduled part of this. So now we've, this is this is where we left it. We hid the, the group and we've, we've exploded everything. Now we've cut it uh, and then uh, deleted the points and then pasted it back in. And now I'm going to use uh, TomTom's Vertex tools to basically I'm scaling all those vertexes uh, to zero on that side. I'm going to go over here and do the same. So I'm going to basically do this so I can get a rectangular shape out of out of all of this. So you can see that uh, once we've done that, um, I, uh, we'll have a rectangle, uh, kind of a rectangle pattern that we can start to use, and that's going to what we're going to use to, to build our wall structure with. Um, so now I'm going to go in and now that we have all these different uh, group areas, we're going to use this conic curve in the face uh, command. And when you click anywhere, it puts a conic curve. That one's not really what we want. So I'm going to undo that and I'll hit the tab key and I'm going to offset instead of 25, I'm going to offset it a much smaller amount, let's say five. I'm going to only have a number is going to be five uh, of the uh, uh, vertices that was going to be around it and the weight I'm adding two so it's going to make it a little sharp it's going to hug, hug those lines a little tighter when I put the weight on two so now as I click through here you'll start to see that this is pretty much more like what I like although I may want it even tighter than that uh, so let's undo that uh, just back out of it and uh, we'll add it three instead so that's much tighter now oops you can see I got a mistake down here, the bottom one, and I'm trying to figure out what that problem could be. So I'm going to undo that, and uh, I'm going to move those vertices around a little bit uh, so that I don't have that overlapping like that. Um, so I'll move that around, run it again, and I'm still having uh, lots of problems on that. So um, as you can see, I'm not sure what the deal is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom up on that and find out what's going on. So here I do. I'll zoom. I'll zoom in there. And I'll use vertex tools uh, once I see that I've got, oh, I got multiple vertices there. So check this out. So I'll, I'll, I'll grab my vertex tools uh, and I'll select uh, select these. And you can see up on the left, it says two vertices selected. So I can hit the weld button on that, boom, put them together. And now when I go back, I'll be able to, uh, to uh, hit tab key and, uh, you know, I get, the, I get the right thing. So Turns out there's a couple other mistakes. There's one right there. There's a couple more tool, a couple more vertices there, uh, and so you just need to basically kind of walk through and make sure that you don't have any vertices that are too close together, or else you're going to have problems with it. So, um, 
And uh, as I move through this, you'll find that I actually run into it one or two more times. But uh, it's a, you know, there's one right there. So I see that I've got uh, two more vertex close again. So again, I'll use TomTom's vertex tools weld it and be ready to go. So I think that one there too, weld that one as well. So now I should be good. Let's go ahead and, and uh, uh, build out these convex uh, spa uh, spaces or paths here. Curves, and now I've got those. I'm going to go ahead and select, uh, ungroup them. Actually, they're all grouped, so select all, explode them, and then uh, deselect them so that they'll actually punch a hole through the originating geometry. And then I select them again, and I'm going to, uh, once I've got them all selected, I'll group them. And I'm going to use these as stone, as a stone path of some sort uh, as I move forward. So click here uh, and group them. And then uh, once I've grouped them, let's name them. Uh, stones. And uh, let's hide it. And once it's hidden, then we have, uh, we can start to look at what we have left. So this is the, the thing that we want to basically extrude out. The problem is we have those little lines in the middle there, which are going to present a little bit of a problem extrusion, as you know. If we try and extrude up, we're going to get this kind of thing, and that's not what we want. We could use joint push-pull, but there's another kind of interesting way of solving this particular problem that I recently discovered. To get rid of these particular lines, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything, and I'm going to soften it uh, using the soften smooth edges. So triple-click, select everything, soften it, okay, and then soften coplanar, and it basically will hide those lines. So once we've done that, uh, and it's a simple matter of double clicking, not triple clicking. Triple clicking will select the hidden line. So that's a triple click, double clicking. And we double click and then we basically go in and shift click on the uh, on just the face. So now we have just the hedges and we hide those. So now that they're hidden, we can triple click and now we'll turn it back out. We'll turn the angles back out. So now we have this face and these lines. So what I'm going to do now is basically drag, drag out. Uh, deselect everything and then I'm going to drag a rectangle. I'm not going to triple click or double click. I'm going to basically drag a rectangle around everything. And then I'm going to use TomTom Tom selection tools and I'm going to go in and say deselect faces. Okay, so that got rid of the faces. And once I've done that, now I can hit the delete button and I've got rid of all those. And it's a very simple thing now to unhide last. And there we are. Now I can uh, I can push pull and and uh, you know just like I would normally so that was kind of a nice trick it's really kind of good for sub subdivision surfaces as well you can use it for uh, a lot of different kinds of, of uh, uh, things but uh, especially when you're trying to get rid of triangles and sub D's that's a, a ni another nice trick to, to, to use so um, now that we've got uh, basically this set up what I'm going to do is I want to take this wall and I'm going to bend it uh, and uh, well, first before I do that, let's put in a glass. I'll put a little glass section in there. This is a little group that we, we're going to create, uh, which is glass. I'll actually have to center it in in this actual uh, in, in the actual uh, divider. There it is. And as we centered it, we'll group everything, and then we're going to then we're going to bend all that. Make sure that we're, we're working with solids before we bend, so we don't have any weird things happen, uh, which were the solid inspectors showed us. So rotate it up. And then we'll use uh, one of Frito's tools. Actually, it's one of his uh, uh, one of the more interesting. Uh, actually, here we are moving it uh, so it's on, on the on the ground plane. Um, and uh, oh yeah, before we before we bend it, we'll add some add some surfaces to it as well. So we've got it uh, got the glass in there and, and got a red got a red color on the on the lattice work. So we use. The radial bending free from Frito tool from Frito's tools, really nice nice tool. I'm gonna click, and once I start moving it, I just type in 180 degrees, and there it bent it all the way around. So that's really kind of a nice uh, a nice tool. Now, so what we have left is we have these stones. Uh, so I'm gonna use joint push pull. I can select one, and I'll, it'll it'll basically uh, extrude all of them. So that's a cool thing, right? So once I you know select one, extrude them all, and then I'll go in and use the radius tool and uh, Put a little radius around it, uh, all these edges, and so those are our pebbles. Uh, now I need to build a little bit of a uh, kind of a concrete pad around it, 
and it has the copy pad we're adjusting it up so that the, the pebbles just poke through a little bit and we'll group everything and, and texture it uh, and then the next thing to do is we just need to resize it, this pad uh, so that it's, it's going to be big enough for this little latticework wall that we built. So let's around with that, make a component out of the latticework, move the second one around, and that's about it. Now I need to go to Keyshot, and we'll load it up in here, and we'll start uh, adjusting things. I'm putting a, a glass, setting that to be glass, changing the uh, actual environment maps to a particular time of in, in July, so we get a, kind of a summer, morning summer sun coming in. Um, adjusting the uh, rounded edges for each one of the actual uh, latticework walls and uh, you know, adding some materials and trying to find the right view that we're going to like. Maybe set up some depth of field effects as we move forward. Uh, and then uh, once you get that done, we're going to add a little frosting in the, in the actual in that frost bump map in the actual uh, glass. And once that's, uh, that's done, there's our, our depth of field rendered image. So I hope you enjoyed this. It's a quick one, but it, uh, it's something that I think uh, was good for me to, to work through. Thanks.